After several delays, Blue Origin's largest rocket blasted off this morning, sending a test satellite into orbit, but the mission wasn't a total success. The rocket's booster crashed while trying to land in the ocean. I want to bring in Derek Pitts for more on this. He is the chief astronomer from the Franklin Institute and always provides great insight and analysis in moments like this. So, so Derek, first, uh, let's talk about the uh, bumps uh, after a couple of delays here. How important was, was this launch uh, for Blue Origin to be able to compete with SpaceX, given uh, that uh, problem that they had with the booster? Well, it was important for them to solve whatever problems they were having with the booster so they could have a successful launch. This is the first time Blue Origin has launched New Glenn. This is a much bigger rocket than anything they've ever launched before, 322 feet tall. And it's meant to be a direct competitor to some of the rockets that are available through SpaceX. And so uh, it was really important for them to get this off, and they've done so successfully. They weren't expecting that they were actually going to be able to, to land successfully. That would have been an added bonus. Uh, but the launch is what they really wanted to nail, and they got that done. So it's so interesting to me, Derek, because I don't know anything about this other than my great fascination and awe, which dates back to my childhood, of watching rockets take off and go into space. But, but the, the issues that these uh, independent, these companies have with getting these uh, aircraft into orbit, it, it strikes me as, I don't know, I guess the way I'm trying to think of this is, it feels like NASA's been able to do it going back to the 1950s. Um, and y yes, there have been challenges, but they've been able to successfully put a, a man on the moon several times. Why are there so many issues and delays with these um, independently uh, privatized rockets? Well, actually, Vlad, if you look at the rate at which they've been accomplishing their goals and tasks, they're really doing a remarkable job. They've come so far in a much shorter time than it took NASA to get to where NASA is, in a sense. I mean, if you look at just the launch vehicle question itself, now there's no question that NASA had a tremendous accomplishment by getting astronauts to the moon. Uh, but the way in which these two companies have been working, Blue Origin and SpaceX, have been remarkable in that they've used an iterative process where they build an article, they fly it, see what the problems are, correct, and then launch immediately again to uh, get to a successful product. So they've actually done extraordinarily well, and they've done it uh, at a much lower cost. They've also been able to do it at a much more advanced uh, schedule. And they've also been able to do it uh, without the intervention of Congress cutting budgets for the agency. They've been able to do it on the auspices of the owners of the companies that are both uh, two of the richest men in the world. I love to hear it. That's why we have you on, Dara, for breaking it down like that for us. Uh, let me also ask you about this spacewalk that's happening this morning at the International Space Station for the two astronauts that are, are still stuck there. And everybody feels bad for them. I'm sure that they're fine, but uh, what works? what is the work that needs to be done? And when can we expect these astronauts to come home? Well, we can expect that uh, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams will be home uh, in early March. There's a return vehicle that's going to become available for them that will bring them back. And, uh, you know, you really have to look at what they're doing there uh, with enjoyment because of the fact that Sonny Williams is on this spacewalk that's happening today with another astronaut on board International Space Station, Nick Haig. Sonny was not expected to be on a spacewalk during her time on space station. She was only supposed to be there for 10 days. So the extended stay for her has resulted in a spacewalk. So she's really hit the jackpot on this one. And for those two astronauts that we think of as stranded, they've had extra time in space that they possibly may not have been able to get if their program was only 10 days long. Hmm. I'm sure they're much warmer uh, out there in space than I am in this studio. Uh, Derek Pitts, always great to have you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Vlad. <laughs>